post road Jen. Welcome to this special episode of the Explicitly Pro Life podcast. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I wanted to come to you today with just my raw thoughts about yesterday, what happened at the Supreme Court, where we go from here, what it means now in day one of post row America. So as soon as I woke up this morning, I um, went live on Instagram to share some of my thoughts. So my, my voice is a little groggy. I have no makeup on, but I wanted to just make this into a podcast for you because I think it really encapsulates, you know, what's going on in my head with all the different things happening at one time. Also wanted to make sure you saw the New York times. I mean, the article is completely biased. I mean, it's the New York times, but look who's on the cover. I, um, it is extremely humbling, uh, to, uh, wake up and, uh, get a text message from a, from a friend, one of our staff members, to let me know that what we did yesterday made the cover uh, of the New York Times. I kind of want to send this to, like, my very uh, liberal college I went to that wasn't, like, super helpful in me finding my career path and being like, yeah, alumni is being doing this. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, okay. Well, listen into this episode. I hope you enjoy. Uh, make sure you subscribe, share it around uh, with all your pro-life friends and family, and get active, guys. It is day one of the post row era. Our team at Students for Life is hitting the doors uh, in Maryland, across the D.C. area today, warning neighbors about the predatory abortion facilities in this area and about all the nonviolent support services that are existing across our country. That's what we're doing day one. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a post row era. You know, Saturday is, um, <clears throat> Saturday is usually abortion day in America. If you've ever been out sidewalk counseling or, um, praying in front of an abortion facility, you know, that si Saturday is the is the day. That's the biggest day. I would say abortions are committed across the country. After uh, not sleeping uh, for about two days, I finally fell asleep around 1 a.m. this morning. And so I just got up about half an hour ago and I woke up not groggy or, or grumpy that I still didn't really get full eight hours of sleep. I woke up with this feeling that today hundreds of lives will be saved. Immediately after the road decision came down yesterday, states like uh, Kentucky, I saw uh, Texas, Alabama, people just stopped committing abortions. Abortion facilities literally shut down. The state of Ohio issued a memo yesterday saying that their heartbeat law is going into effect. In Alabama, the attorney general released uh, a statement similar. In uh, Missouri, the same thing is happening where they're going to shut down all abortions in their country. What you and I did yesterday, what our movement did yesterday, oh, because of 49 and a half years of fighting, which by the way, interesting fact, yesterday was the birthday of Nellie Gray, the founder of the March for Life. She passed away in 2012, is a hero to many of us in the pro-life movement, part of that uh, OG pro-life gen, we call them. It was also the sacred day, the feast day of the sacred heart of Jesus, if you're Catholic, it was kind of a big deal too. But, um, but what we did yesterday mattered. It wasn't just a notch on a political victory belt. It didn't, it wasn't just like, a, oh, we won, put a check in the win column for us. Because of six and then five, there was two decisions. It's a little confusing. Justice Roberts should be ashamed of himself. But because of those really five Supreme Court justices, and their courageousness because of the state of Mississippi, because the attorney general, Lynn Fitch uh, of Mississippi, bucked, to be honest with you, the conservative establishment 
uh, bucked some even in the pro-life establishment and said, no, you know what? We're not going to go to the Supreme Court and just defend our law in Mississippi that bans painful abortions when, when children can feel pain at 15 weeks. No, we're going to go further than that. And we're going to argue that this entire thing was predicated on a made up right, a cancer that was said that was in our constitution which never was that, you know, this right to privacy was found in the shadow of a penumbra of our constitution. It wasn't actually written in the constitution. Yesterday I was watching as I was getting ready to go live on MSNBC, which wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, by the way, because there was a lot of shouting in um, behind me. So I think it was hard for them to shout at me while I was just listening in. Uh, but while I was waiting to go live on MSNBC after the decision came down, I was watching Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Nancy Pelosi's reaction. And it was fascinating to watch her complain about, you know, the Supreme Court's previous day's ruling on gun laws, something that's actually in our Constitution, like in the Second Amendment, the right to bear and keep arms. Uh, but then in the next breath, arguing that something that isn't in the Constitution at all abortion uh, should be guaranteed and should be taxpayer funded um, and should be allowed. But today, when I woke up today, I have, it's, it's a joyous Saturday. Not here in DC, it's not. That, you know, this is a place where abortion is unregulated and they're committing abortions and since the ninth month. Our friends at POW, a progressive anti-abortion uprising, have proven that uh, openly with the with with showing the, the five babies that uh, a worker who was there to collect the remains of children uh, gave them, showing that these are late term children. These are third trimester children being aborted here in this city. But in many states across America, babies are being saved today. It's not often in the pro-life movement. You know, we talk about this a lot in Students for Life. And when I'm, you know, trying to measure our progress at Students for Life, and are we advancing the ball down the court? You know, when I'm trying to, 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 to propose to supporters and our board members that what we do matters, I have to be really careful. I can't ever really project, you know, the number of lives that will be saved because we've started and sustained and are helped mentoring a Students for Life group on campus. Many of you uh, know of, of, you know, babies have been saved because you have conversations, you know, whether your student life group went out in front of uh, a, an abortion facility and talked to a woman uh, about the violence of abortion and redirected her into a nonviolent pregnancy resource center, or whether you helped a student who was considering abortion because your school wasn't, you know, adhering to Title IX uh, and actually guaranteeing her rights. You all have, you know, these antidotal stories when, when you get to interact with someone. But when I'm largely saying we need $20 million as a, you know, two legal organizations to um, sustain and support the public generation, it's very hard for me to say $20 million will result in uh, X number of lives saved. I can say I, you know, we'll have 10% minds changed on college campuses. We'll change 18 to 35% of those we talk to online. I can say we can start, you know, a hundred new students for life groups. We can train 20,000 new students. We've got 200 of the top uh, pro-life students in America actually right here in the same hotel with me in Washington, D.C. Some of our top pro-life legislators will be joining us tomorrow uh, for our, what we call our National Leaders Collective, which, by the way, the hotel, uh, you know how I woke up today. Uh, the hotel called me complaining about our students who, by the way, we never have gotten any complaints ever in the history of Students for Life at hotels that we're at because literally um, our students, our pro-life actors are the best human beings on this planet. But there's a social worker conference going on here in this hotel, which I don't know if you've ever interacted uh, with social workers, but apparently being a social worker and wanting to help kids means you want to advocate for some kids to die. Uh, they are literally like the most liberal people uh, on this planet. And so these social workers, like they're crazy. Like they're coming up to our students, debating our students. I was walking in the hallway yesterday and a woman I think thought I was for the social worker conference because I didn't 
didn't look like our students. I wasn't in a t-shirt and started bitching at me about our students. Um, and so, yeah, they called me to tell me our students were knocking on doors in the hallway. And I said, no, I said, I think somebody probably overheard that our students are knocking on doors in the neighborhoods today because that's what they're doing. But I, I highly doubt that they're knocking on doors in hallways. I think your, your folks, your get other guests, uh, who are raging pro-abortion, uh, women, um, over her students and what they were about to do, which I think is freaking fantastic. Um, but anyway, when we're projecting, you know, why folks should give and what the result of, of giving the students for life is, I can never say, you know, how many babies are, are saved. I just can't do that. It's, it's an impossible number. But today, we know babies are being saved. We calculated earlier this week, I called uh, my good friend, Dr. Michael New. He's a professor at uh, Catholic University of America, the kind of foremost researcher on effectiveness of abortion laws. He actually does the actual math that I never want to do. Uh, and I, we called Dr. New earlier this week because I had asked him, you know, we at Students Life had been out in front of the Supreme Court um, every decision day since the end of March because we see our, our, our role. We know what our role is to be the ground troops of the pro-life movement. To be honest with you, I was a little disappointed uh, even yesterday that there weren't other national pro-life groups out there with us. It was Students for Life. Um, and it just... It was kind of sad to think last night. I was just laying in bed like, had we not been out there, had our supporters not you know, paid for the, the thousands of dollars of security and not, had, had not you know, paid for the flights of these 200 students that came for our National Leaders Collective this weekend, the pro-life movement would have been grossly underrepresented at the Supreme Court today. That was a scary thought, but thank goodness we're there. But anyway, um, I think it's, unbelievable that, you know, hundreds of lives will be saved. Dr. New, uh, earlier this week when I, I called him complaining, I said, you know, every day we're out of front of the Supreme Court, you know, we're waiting for this decision to happen and it doesn't happen. And we know it's coming. We know it's coming, but they're just waiting. They're delaying it. And my frustration was, you know, we've had this leaked decision since May. How many babies have died since this leaked decision? I mean, think about it. There were babies who could have been saved if that leaked decision, if the day after the leaked decision came out on May 2nd, if the leaked decision would have come out on May 3rd, they said, okay, well, cat's out of the bag. Here's where we are. There would be babies alive today. There have been babies who have been born who are alive today. But they waited. The word on the street was that they were likely waiting because the dissent uh, was refusing to release a dissent and they were trying, you know, they always have to release or try to release a dissent, you know, with with a decision. I don't know if that was true or not. They're trying to be super secret. I still want to know who the hell the leaker was. But, you know, if it had been a, a conservative or Republican, you know, we all would have known who the leaker was, where they came from, where their parents address was. Uh, we would all know that. But I called Dr. Noon. I said, how many babies? So we know, and the media is largely reporting, that in about 26 states, we'll see abortion made largely unavailable very soon because of you know previous trigger laws, because of laws like Students for Life Actions, Life at Conception law that was just you know signed into law in Oklahoma two months ago that as of August 1st uh, makes committing abortion a criminal penalty. Oh, hell yeah. Um, because of our, you know, because of these laws, we have about 26 states. And there's some special sessions that some states should call into. Like, by the way, did you know that Indiana doesn't have a trigger law? Yeah. So we've already started a program in Indiana telling the governor, telling the state legislature to get their butts back to Indianapolis and ban abortion in their state. So if you live in Indianapolis, you better do that. Um, there's about seven other states where we're trying to get special sessions called, where the governor can call in a special session and the state can say, okay, now because of Roe versus Wade, we can actually do, do sorry, my phone's getting ready to die. So it was telling me that, um, because of Roe versus Wade, uh, 
the states can say, okay, now we're going to do something we've promised to do. So you, you really got to, I mean, you're going to hear from me a lot in the coming <laughs> weeks and months. Um, but uh, the, the gist of it is, is all of these state legislators who for decades have been saying, oh yeah, I'm pro-life. I really can't do much because, you know, Roe versus Wade. Now they can do something and they're going to be held accountable. And a lot of them are probably going to be scared because they saw the Antifa protests. Um, this is, you know, you know, they've seen the Jane's revenge threats. Last night was a night of rage. I still haven't heard whether or not our office has been vandalized. Thankfully, we're, you know, a little bit more of a, uh, of a obscure location by design. Um, so that might help. You would not believe, though, the threatening voicemails that started coming into our office uh, immediately after the decision by all men, by the way. I, I'm going to do a video with those uh, voicemails. I asked for them to be saved because some of them are freaking hilarious. Um but anyway, going back to my original point, uh, this see, this is why I haven't come live because my mind is racing in so many different directions of things we need to do because I've only been preparing for this moment for 16 years since we launched Students for Life of America. And so now it's finally here. Um, but yeah, Dr. New, I was you know telling him about these 26 states and he knew the states. I said, can we figure out the number? How many lives will be saved? 880. So we know there's about 3,200 abortions that are committed every single day in America. With these 26 states that move instantly uh, or very quickly uh, to ban or restrict abortion, to protect women from the predatory abortion facility, we can save 880 babies every single day. And that's not even going into additional states and, you know, seeing work being done, especially in this year's midterm elections, which, by the way, if you haven't signed up to be a Students for Life Action volunteer, now is the time to do this because we're going to be door knocking in Kansas. They have a ballot referendum. We've already had staff on the ground there in Kansas. It's going to be the first state to have abortion on the ballot since Rose falling on August 2nd. We need your butt in Kansas. So go to Students for Life Action's website. I think it's studentsforlifeaction.org slash volunteer and sign up to volunteer. But anyway, 880 babies. I woke up today to the complaints of the hotel because of the liberal social worker guests who hate our students, who are amazing, the most amazing students you'll ever meet in your life, with the thought that 880 babies are going to be saved today and every day. Yeah, we did something yesterday. We did something historic. We did something that's never been done in the history of our nation. You and I did that. And you and I are going to continue to do that. It's not something that's going to stop. You know, I remember in the 2020 election, I remember in the 2016 election, there's like liberal pro-lifers, which we love liberal pro-lifers. I'm always trying to find actual pro-lifers who are liberal-leaning, progressive Democrat, because I think folks like that can speak in a way that I can't speak, right? I walk into a room and apparently like, there's like a sign on my forehead, this woman is a conservative. Um, I don't even wear pearls anymore. Apparently my pearls used to give away, but I don't even wear pearls anymore. Anyway, I'm always looking for truly pro-life liberals and progressives because I think that's when we know we'll really win, right? Is when we have Republicans and Democrats fighting our vote because I'm a realist when it comes to politics and what politicians do and do not want to do. But I remember in the 2016 election and the 2020 election, there were certain liberal Facebook and Instagram groups. I wouldn't really call them organizations with with um, substantial funding who literally, you know, I remember in 2021 Instagrammer, I think she's banned me on uh She's banned me I, this account and my personal account, my Hawkins History Hunters account, which is just pictures of my kids. Uh, and uh, she... Um, she she like posted stuff like F Trump and it doesn't matter and you can you, you don't sell your soul and vote for this evil terrible person um, because it doesn't matter we always get disappointed by the Supreme Court and they're not going to do anything anyway I wonder how that person's feeling today because regardless of whether or not you voted for him, regardless of not whether you loved or hated Trump and you know don't get me started. There's lots of things I can say about that. Donald Trump, 
his election, the work that we did, you know, pressuring the U.S. Senate to stand up on life, pressuring U.S. Senate candidates and elected officials to stand up for life, the work that we did to pressure, you know, this kind of novice to politics who we all know wasn't really pro-life when he started running or before he was running, to become a pro-life president, the single single-handedly the most pro-life president, most pro-life presidential administration, I think a large part to Vice President Mike Pence, and you know I love him. He is my hero. Um, because of him, because of actually our board co-chairman, Students for Life, a band named Leonard Lee, or somebody you've never met before, but because of Leonard, his relationships with judges across the United States. Leonard went into Trump Tower, met with President Trump, gave him a list, started talking to him about what candidates were on the list, what judges would actually like see what's in the Constitution and was it what wasn't in the Constitution. Because of them, we have a pro-life Supreme Court. Because of our work, because even our door knocking, I remember door knocking in 2020 with some uh, liberal pro-life uh, activists who were like, I don't even like President Trump, but I'm telling people to vote for him because we have to, because we have to save lives. I don't even like President Trump, but I'm telling you to vote for them. I love those people because they were tr they were always true believers, always true believers in what we were doing and with the mission, the strategic mission that we were accomplishing. Because of those true believers, not because of the people that were on Instagram and said F Trump and didn't do a damn thing, who now still call themselves pro-life, by the way. If you call yourselves pro-life, you better vote pro-life first. You better be a single issue pro-life voter or don't get, dare give yourself that title. I'll get a little upset about that. But because of what we've done, because of all of you, even if you didn't like President Trump or, you know, didn't like his Twitter account, or whatever, but you said, I'm going to vote because I'm going to vote strategically. I'm going to vote for the pre-born. We did something that's never been done before yesterday. It's on the front page of the New York Times. The New York Times uh, is noted what we've done. And because of that, 880 babies will be saved today, tomorrow, the next day. So yeah, I woke up in a really good mood today because this is a Saturday where lives will be saved. Thanks guys for joining. Sorry, I haven't been coming live to you before. Uh, it was a little hectic as you can imagine yesterday. I'll try to keep uh, updated. Um, if Students for Life's websites are still under attack, they've been sustaining a huge DOS attack since, as you can imagine, yesterday. So if you can get onto our website, make sure you sign up for uh, our email list at studentsforlife.org. There are going to be a lot of marching orders in the coming days, a lot of volunteer opportunities to sign up. For example, the Kansas deployment, since you know Kansas will be the first state where abortion will be on the ballot, uh, signing up for the 2022 midterms, uh, to go door knocking with us across the states. Uh, we are already door knocking in cities across America. You know, when everyone says, oh, what well, pro-lifers actually do to support women. Yeah, I literally have knocked on 120 thousand doors because of you i can say we've knocked on 120 thousand doors in the past year in 20 cities through our campaign for abortion free cities educating neighbors and uh, neighborhoods surrounding abortion facilities about the nonviolent alternatives that exist promoting spending hundreds of thousands of your dollars that you've donated to students for life uh, promoting standing with you.org which is a website that we've we maintain at students for life which has public and private nonviolent resources that any woman across America can join. Um, it can have it start an instant chat or call and get instant help and get connected to nonviolent resources near her. Yeah, that's what we do, by the way. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. We've got to continue to do this. Um, I, should, I should go. But two biggest things we have to really do, offense and defense battle, beyond the elections, which we all know yesterday, President Biden is trying to get everyone to forget about the fact it cost me $10 to get a 12 pack of Coke and it cost me $6 to fill up my gas tank. So, you know, he's trying to launch his campaign uh, off the backs of the broken bodies and uh, of, of aborted children. Um, but he, you know, so beyond the election and what we're going to have to do for the election to ensure that the Senate does not get a majority so they cannot pack the Supreme Court because they cannot pass a law to codify Roe v. Wade and make abortion legal in all nine months and make us pay for it. Beyond that, 
what can we do? Offensively, we have to tell people about the nonviolent resources out there that from when the 50 years we've been starting, supporting, sustaining more than 3,400 pregnancy centers and maternity homes across the nation that vastly outnumber uh, the, the fewer than 600 abortion facilities in our country. And just all you have to do is promote standingwithyou.org. The website has everything on it. Get our bumper sticker, talk about, put on your social media, follow the Instagram account, follow the Facebook account, standingwithyou.org. One, offense about. Two, we have to defeat chemical abortion. President uh, Biden even talked about this yesterday, about how they want to get dangerous chemical abortions over the counter. You know that whole mantra of abortions between a woman or a doctor? Yeah, they, that's, not, that's not them. They want abortions to be over the counter. Women, um, we know 50% of all abortions are being committed through chemical abortions. These are dangerous pills that result in injury, infertility, and death. Um, and injury to women. We always know they result in death to babies, but injury, infertility, and death to women. Um, and they want to use them to get over the counter. This is why Planned Parenthood, by the way, has been pushing to become, they are now the nation's second largest um, uh, servicer or pr provider of transgender hormone drugs. Why? Because they've been trying to escalate their cash cow because they know the ideologues in the abortion industry want chemical abortions over the counter, which actually means Planned Parenthood is going to lose money on this deal, which is why they've stepped into this whole other thing too. I mean, it, it goes into their whole vision at Planned Parenthood because Margaret Sanger, the racist, started Planned Parenthood not to kill babies. She actually was against abortion, but she was a racist and wanted to sterilize people, certain stocks or breeds of people from having babies. So actually it makes sense why Planned Parenthood's involved in these transgender hormones because these transgender hormones actually do sterilize you for life. And there's no reneging on that. Um, so that's why Planned Parenthood stepped into this because the abortion industry wants to get these drugs over the counter. Um, and so we're going to have to fight back hard to educate Americans, to educate women about the dangers of these drugs. Um, so that's, that is, I would say your defensive battle, your defensive marching orders. And just in general, don't be afraid to be your pro, don't be afraid of pro-life. Yes. Is there an Antifa rioting in some states? Yep. Did they try to block the streets in LA? Yep. Uh, has Antifa set fire to things in Portland? Yep. Seattle, same deal. Yeah. These guys look for excuse to, to, to riot, to burn it down, to call for anarchy all the time. I mean, we had U.S. Congresswomen calling for anarchy in front of the Supreme Court yesterday. I mean, we should be surprised because they're Democrats, but yes, that's happening. Um, but yeah, it's going to get harder to say you're pro-life and they're going to try to shut you up. They're going to try to intimidate you. Like I said, you would not believe the threats that we've gotten. I had to have a security guard on me the entire day yesterday and now I'm locked in a hotel because whatever. Um, but we can't give up. We can't give up. I would encourage you to look the history that happened after 1965. I mean, 1865. The end of the Civil War, it's a wonderful thing happened, right? Millions of people were freed. President Lincoln was shot five days after the end of the Civil War. Reconstruction effort began. It ultimately failed, and it took 99 years from the end of the Civil War until the signing of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. 99 years of Supreme Court-sanctioned segregation, of violence, of terrorism, of whole states where if you were, had dark skin, you didn't want to be out after dark in fear of the night rise and the KKK. I can't wait 99 years, but I can tell you it's going to be hard to put our nation back together. And we have a 50 state plan to do it. Um, and, and yes, there'll be, there'll be violence from the other side because those who advocate for violence against babies behind the closed doors of Planned Parenthood have no qualms as we've now seen about committing it in the streets. This is actually the result of our culture of death where we've dehumanized the most precious and most vulnerable among us. When we do that, it's very easy to say another person staring you in the street isn't a person deserving of rights and treatment too. So it's going to going to be hard, but we can't we can't start another ninety nine years of reconstruction. We've got to get back to work immediately today. Yes, eight hundred eighty babies will be saved today, 
but we've got a lot of work to do to reconstruct our country and you can't be afraid to do it. So I, uh, I hope this helps, gives you marching orders for today. My phone is now going to officially die. So I have to sign off. Um, if you haven't subscribed to, um, my podcast at, uh, explicitly pro life, wherever you get your podcasts, um, I'll probably come out with some sort of, I don't know. I don't really have much on my agenda today. I have to do a CNN interview at some point, write a speech, but I might, I might just do a podcast here in a little bit. Uh, get out some marching orders immediately for for everyone um, of what we need to do. So um, have a great Saturday. Up to 880 babies will be saved today. Bye, guys.